Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stop stories. Central government operations result in improved fiscal outcomes in 2018. Male students at the Grand Riviere Secondary School to receive the Big Brother influence. Crew of celebrity silhouettes show care for local beaches. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Policies implemented by the government of St. Lucia are having a positive impact on the economy. In fact, the Caribbean Development Bank, in its Country Economic Review 2018 for St. Lucia, reported that central government operations resulted in improved fiscal outcomes in 2018. Preliminary estimates from the Ministry of Finance indicate that the overall balance switched to a surplus position of 0.3% of the gross domestic product, the GDP, as at September 2018, from a deficit of 0.8% as at the same period in 2017. While the primary surplus improved to 3.5% of GDP from 2.4% over the comparable period. Among the factors contributing to, to this improved fiscal balance is the Citizenship by Investment Program, the CIP. The CDB noted that collections from the CIP were particularly strong. September 2018 figures indicate a more than sevenfold rise to 60.2 million US dollars from 7 million US dollars for the same period a year earlier. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chastney, says legislation will soon be introduced to govern the economic fund. The Sufria Regional Development Foundation, the SRDF, has announced the opening of the long-anticipated Sufria Beach Park. The project was conceptualized 10 years ago when the Sufria Regional Development Foundation, together with the hotel sector, recognized the need for recreational attractions within the area. With assistance from the Taiwanese government, development plans were drawn up. The facility will employ one administrator, two janitors, seven wardens, including one beach ranger, two lifeguards, two hostesses, and one maintenance person. In addition, 11 local entrepreneurs are conducting business within the park. The official opening ceremony for the park has been scheduled to take place on the 5th of April, 2019. Male students at the Grand Riviere Secondary School have been tapped for guidance and motivation with the creation of a Big Brother program. After being invited as one of the guest speakers at this year's celebration of Nobel Laureate Week, Project's coordinator of the Tourism Enhancement Fund, Wendell George, was moved by the feedback received from the Grand Riviere Secondary School and was inspired to build a new relationship with the school. The Big Brother program will engage 20 boys and will focus on areas such as building confidence, conflict resolution, teamwork, emotional intelligence, public speaking training, and internships. For Mr. George, it's an opportunity to help young men build their capacity to make meaningful contributions in society. Where do young men go when they're um, feeling depressed? Um, where do young men go to help develop themselves, to develop their soft skills? Um, where, where can a young boy go if he has um, issues um, that he doesn't want to speak um, to anyone about but you know how can he really get to um, use some of those energies that he has um, for the right reasons and I really felt that, that it was necessary to develop that program for our young men in St. Lucia. Studies have shown that involvement of a father or a positive male role model can have profound effects on children. Father-child interaction promotes a child's physical well-being, perceptual ability, and competency for relating with others. These children also demonstrate greater ability to take initiative and exhibit self-control. While George believes that women are doing a phenomenal job at raising children, the role of a positive role model is still important. They may be bright students, they may be law-abiding citizens of St. Lucia, but Something is always missing if you do not have a male figure in that, in that child's life. Um, I mean, kudos to the women who are doing a good job right now, but it's always wise to have a male figure in, 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 in that child's life. The young men are excited to be part of the program. This program could benefit me in helping me speak properly, as well as I have to participate in the Calypso competition in the next two months. This can help me with my confidence in 
speaking better in front of a in front of a large crowd. I am joining this program to take advantage of certain things that are being given to me, opportunities from the Big Brother program, and I am trying to be a better individual, a better citizen of our country, St. Lucia. The boys will also be participating in different community-based initiatives as the program develops. Mr. George is urging men in society to get involved in the program and to develop similar programs in other communities across the island. First National Bank delivered a much-welcomed parting gift to the National Under-16 netball team, which is representing St. Lucia at the 19th edition of the Jean-Pierre Caribbean Youth Netball Tournament in Antigua. Bank officials visited the team during the final days of practice at the Vigi Sports Complex to hand over a check and offer some words of encouragement. More from Anisia Antoine. Twelve under-16 St. Lucian girls from around the island have traveled to Antigua to represent St. Lucia at the 19th edition of the Japier Caribbean Youth Netball Tournament. According to the team manager, Sanya Antoine, the training for the event began last year and the girls are excited and ready to give it their all for the championship title this year. We're very confident in our young ladies, um, especially the ones that are returning because we know they have the experience and they, they can lead the new ones that we have right now. So we're very excited. The girls as well, they're very excited. The ones that were there last year, last year they're looking forward to this year and those that are there, they're looking forward to the new experience. While the sport of netball may not be making headlines on St. Lucia airwaves, a few organizations were able to identify the passion and talent that drives the St. Lucia national netball team and provide them with the necessary support. First National Bank has been assisting the national netball team for many years. We see this tournament sometimes as a life-changing experience. For a lot of them, they're very young, they're very impressionable. Some of them have never left St. Lucia, so it's an opportunity for them you know, to go out of St. Lucia and um, see the similarities that exist um, between the islands and, of course, the differences as well experience, not just the game, but the culture and the people as well, the cuisine. So there are many facets to, yes, the game is on, but we want them to enjoy the game, we want them to do their best. St. Lucia hosted the Japier Caribbean Youth Netball Tournament last year and the national team came in second place behind Jamaica. President of the National Netball Association says she's optimistic that St. Lucia can win the title if they stay focused. In fact, St. Lucia defeated Antigua 43-8 in their first match. The coach has been Shane Maxwell and assisted by Vern Alexander and so they've done a very good job so far. So we're hoping that the girls Take it from there, it's all up to them. They're the ones on the court who have to make it happen. And um, having said that, we hope that when they get to Antigua, the best is given and St. Lucia benefits for them. Seven teams are vying for the championship in this year's Jopier Caribbean Youth Netball Tournament. They include Grenada, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Bermuda, St. Lucia, the Commonwealth of Dominica, and the host Antigua and Barbuda. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is standing by with more youth development and sports. In an effort to reduce congestion within the nation's capital, the Castries Constituency Council will be implementing short-term paid parking in a phased approach. Ten terminals will be installed on the following streets. Bridge. Brogley, Urban, Jabatiste, Miku, Labry, Pena, High Street, and in the William Peter Boulevard. Short-term paid parking will run from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday. To find out more, log on to the Castries Constituency Council's Facebook page. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. Ryan O'Brien with your update on happenings in youth development and sports. Official point standings after last week's inter-secondary schools track and field meet at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground confirms St. Mary's College as boys champs and St. Joseph's Convent emerging as girls champs. In the boys' division, St. Mary's amassed 215 points, 
to 145 of their nearest rivals via for comprehensive secondary school. In third was Miku Secondary with 132 points, Castries Comprehensive were fourth on 107 points, and Leon Hess rounded up the top five boys with 105 points. The other five schools in the top 10 were Schwazel 98, Ira Simmons 90, Antipo 74, Vidbutai 65, and Beanfield 63 points. St. Joseph's Convent maintained their dominance in the girls' champs, beating off VFO Comprehensive 235 points to 175. Miku Secondary held their spot with 141 points, Beanfield 4th with 104, and Corin 5th with 78 points. The next five placings went to Leon Hess 69, Babuno 66, Castries Comprehensive 62, Vidbutai 59, and Schwazel. 56 points. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will put on the Inter-District Primary Schools Track and Field Championships Wednesday, April 3rd at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. The opening ceremony will commence with a parade and march pass at 9.45 a.m. The countdown continues to the final of the Mass United Insurance Schools Cricket Tournament between St. Mary's College and Miku Secondary on Friday at the Grosile Playing Field. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in collaboration with the sponsors, held a news briefing on Monday to introduce the teams to the public. Keon Gaston is the captain of the Miku Secondary Cricket Team. It has been a great experience, although Miku Sec didn't perform to the best of their ability, but we still reached the finals with, by God's grace, by God's grace. Aki Mogis is the captain of the St. Mary's College team. Unfortunately, he will be unavailable for the grand final as he will be off on St. Lucia national team duties for the upcoming Senior Winner Islands Cricket Tournament. He always spoke about the team's aspirations for the final. Well, so far the tournament has been going very well for us. We've won all our games. Um, have cons we've had consist consistent performances throughout. Um, our bowlers have done the job for us, and our batsmen have stood up, got some runs. But going into the finals, we'll be looking to win it, get our championship, because we've only won, well, I only won in Form Four, well, Form One, in my first year, and we'd be looking to get another one under the belt. Parliamentary representative for Babuno, the Honourable Ezekiel Joseph, has outlined some of the incentives to be granted to champion female high jumper Laverne Spencer in recognition of her 20 years of outstanding representation in the sport of track and field. The parliamentary representative made the disclosure at a gala dinner held in honor of Spencer last Friday. Mr. Joseph was also acting prime minister during the ceremony. The government of St. Lucia, under the leadership of the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, has agreed to recognize Lovin Spencer officially. And you heard a while ago, it was mentioned that in 2007, she was identified as a roving ambassador. I want to say today that we have officially agreed to recognize Lovin Spencer as the youth and sports ambassador to St. Lucia. Can you give a round of applause, please? In addition to this, we have agreed as a government to produce a postage stamp in honor of Loving Spencer. And also to donate to Loving Spencer a motor vehicle. Before we leave you, Youth Month is very much underway, starting with the speech festival now on at the Financial Center. And as we broaden on the concepts of various activities scheduled for the month, our focus today is on the Wayne Wee Memorial Lecture. In partnership with the Wayne Wee Memorial Foundation, this lecture commemorates the death of Wayne Wee,
who died on April 14, 1997, which is also Youth Service Day locally. The Wayne Wee Memorial Lecture will be delivered by Dr. Winston Fulgens on April 13th, starting at 6 p.m. And that's your update from Youth and Sports Today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The nexus between tourism, the environment, and community came into sharp focus on March 29, 2019, when the crew of a major cruise line teamed up with local tourism interests for a cleanup exercise. Celebrity Silhouette called into Port Castries on Friday, March 29. Approximately 20 crew members conducted a cleanup exercise at VG Beach. Members of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, the Ministry of Tourism, the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, the National Conservation Authority, and Cox & Company Limited, who are actively driving a collaborative anti-litter operation for a cleaner and healthier St. Lucia, were part of the initiative. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. I'm innovative. Yeah! I'm competitive. Yeah! I'm productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output oriented. I never stop learning. I give up my best always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur et Madame du département qui est responsable pour la formation du gouvernement, c'est le GIS, c'est le GIS, Télévision Nationale pour la NTN. Comment est-ce que vous avez fait la nouvelle en Primus Hutchinson? Divers ouais qui le gouvernement s'est laissé déjà implémenté, qui travaille très bien à faveur de l'économie s'est laissé. Si nous avons un rapport qui sort de la pour le développement de la pour l'année 2018, comme vous avez l'opération du gouvernement résulte de l'augmentation qui a la situation finance à PIA, l'estimation du ministère des Finances, comme vous avez la journée y a un changement de 0,3% en hausse. Valé l'argent qui a sorti par produit PIA même. Ça, c'est depuis septembre 2018. Côté la tenue, il y a une réduction par 0,8% dans la période à l'année 2017. Pendant la tenue, il y a un improvement monté pour 3,5%, avec 3,7% sorti de 2,4% euh, comparable pour la période. Ça a parmi les raisons pour l'augmentation qui fait contribution pour l'improvement, c'est le programme d'investissement, ça c'est CIP. Donc, pour le développement de l'économie, notez que la TNI a un haussement 7 fois plus pour 60,2 millions de dollars américains, soit 7 millions pour la même période. À l'année avant, le premier ministre et le ministre des Finances, Alan Chasselet, dit qu'il a implémenté la législation tout de suite pour gouverner l'économie pays à une plus haute direction. C'est aussi que j'ai trouvé un conseil là pour augmenter les degrés d'habilité pour produire, ce qui facilite le pays pour devenir plus habile à façon de compétition à ces services qui payent à la production. Le Conseil national, c'est aussi pour qui est-ce que ça Pour aider, c'est aussi pour veiller à son habilité pour produire et aussi pour la compétition. J'ai commencé le travail pour développer une façon de compétition nationale qui a établi principalement pour improuver l'habilité du pays qui a fait uh, ces contributions qui sont nécessaires à la direction. Sala. Plusieurs les représentatifs de business ont participé à une consultation et puis les autorités pour former le conseil de Sala. Parmi ces Grecs qui ont eu l'opinion, c'était Mme Paula Cauldron et sinon Mme Cauldron pour cette ci improuver à son habilité pour produire plus meilleur, c'est faux, le travail fait plus à façon qu'il travaille pour ça produire plus pour une journée. Quand on explique que le travail n'est pas fait plus à travailler, euh, venir à travailler plus souvent et faire assurer que il y a 8 nédits de travail. Alors ça, il y a ça qui est satisfait et puis ça, il y a produit. L'autre grec parlait de pour payer à développer façon 
pour avoir un changement de climat. Comme ça, c'est un des plus gros problèmes qui a menacé le pays. Le ministre de l'Éducation, honorable Dr. Gail Rickabout, a déclaré que l'initiative de l'État s'est passée à un haut degré, mais aussi à un peu engager les personnes à ces communes pays. Honorable Rickabout, si je veux que l'État n'est pas allé concerner qui uh, quantité produit par acte qui ont cultivé et bien pharmacie pour ces produits. Ça n'est pas une responsabilité de l'officier agricole, mais c'est cultivé à même, ça c'est une responsabilité. Pour ça, le concept des produits et pays qui a créé à ce tout secteur pour aider à recevoir des économies et à établir la première façon pour pousser des uh, business à cette ci Le gouvernement de cette ci a continué pour garder en diverses façons pour augmenter et agrandir le pays. Selon le rapport au gouvernement, ça c'est un programme qui est très important pour le pays. Pour ça, le Premier ministre Alain Chastney, le ministre qui est responsable pour travailler pour l'énergie, le ministre Stephenson King, j'ai voyagé pour l'Angleterre et le 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 Pour Pour l'Angleterre et le 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 pour amasser plus cher. Le Premier ministre et le ministre pour l'opération pour cette site ici, qui a fait un raconte et puis Global Port et aussi MSC Cruises pour avancer la discussion concernant les manières pour entretenir le développement de l'industrie de la tourisme et accorder place pour Chebe Chai à son propre EIA. Le gouvernement cette site ici, j'ai commencé à travailler à ce projet pour bâtir et improuver ses propres EIA. À parmi ça, ce qui a fait, c'est pour ou développer le report international et pour placer ses ports castrés dans un meilleur degré. En absence, le Premier ministre, le ministre de l'Agriculture, la Pêche, le Coopératif, l'Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, qui a pris position comme Premier ministre. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons eu aujourd'hui, M. Bédard. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder, je vous remercie pour vous inviter pour vous donner un peu de temps. Quand vous avez la vie, vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle à la présent. Nous avons eu pour nous. Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair, occasionally becoming cloudy with a few widely scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will generate a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow and above normal seas around the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low level clouds drifting along the wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. The tides for Castries Harbour was high at 2.21 p.m. and will be low again at 8.30 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 3.28 p.m. and will be low again at 9.57 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.58 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trost.